This program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. Their bite is worse than their bark. These hardcore killers are terrorizing Fresno, California. Just walking up to somebody putting a gun to the dump. It's a rush, man. There's nothing like it. If you're either with us or you're against us, him up. Kick him. And everyone is an enemy. We've had death threats against our gang officers, against me. We're bulldogs, you know? We don't give a f Fresno, California. Located halfway between LA and San Francisco. It's the gateway to Yosemite National Park. Scenic mountains and farmland surround this picture-perfect town. The city has a reputation as a great place to raise a family. But it's not as all-American as you think. There's not one week or somebody don't die in the city or get shot at. You see people doing robberies. You see all kind of people outside, running up the dolphins, trying to serve them first before the next time they can serve them. It's nasty out here. Many big time gangs haunt Fresno. From TRG to the Asian Boys and the Bloods. But only one is top dog. The Bulldogs. My dog and I'm your dog. You got my back and I got yours. We both outlaws. I'm your dog. I would guess that the Bulldogs are responsible for 50, 60 percent of the crimes in the city. When I'm talking domestic violence, I'm talking shoplifting, I'm talking all the way up to murder. I see a 12 year old boy that was shot in the head by a Bulldog gang member. The gang size is staggering. In the city of Fresno, there are at least 4,500 validated bulldogs. The biggest advantage they have of their numbers, they uh, have way more numbers than any other gang that we have here in Fresno. With an army of soldiers, the bulldogs have murdered their way to the top of the heap. We're tough. We don't lay down for nobody. We put it down. Anybody who want it, we gon' with you. We low in numbers, but numbers ain't. You know, that's just how, how your heart is. If you are hard, you're gonna be a savage. The gang savagery has earned them few allies. They're a real independent gang. They, uh, they don't make friends real easy. To the Bulldogs, it's us against them. We like gang bang, you know. It's a sport to us. This is what we endure, it's what we do, it's what we thrive off of. They fund their empire by selling everything from marijuana to heroin and meth. Since they're not organized, there's no particular drug that they stick with. It's whatever is popular at the time. This is the area where, where I primarily grew up. Natividad Mendoza grew up on Fresno's east side, Bulldog territory. Right out here is where I believe really became a street gang member. The police right there used to always stop us. I mean, they, they had me hemmed up over there, man, on my knees. Taking off my shirt, you know, and um, uh, checking out for gang tattoos and stuff like that. But um, this is a gang area here, and this was my hood. Natividad lived with his mother in Fresno until he was 11. In 1981, he moved to Mexico to live with a family member. There in Mexico, he had like hung me and, and beat me, and um, he had left me for dead. Natividad ran away and became a street kid in Sinaloa, Mexico, until he saved enough money to return to Fresno. When I came back to the States, I was really independent. 
I already had a drug habit. I was already smoking weed. I was already drinking. Natividad was short and scrawny, but he created havoc wherever he went. He was vicious enough to earn the nickname Nino Loco, or Crazy Kid. I was just a mean kid. I was mostly out of control, drunk in public, curfew, stuff like that. Natividad was the ideal prospect for the gang. That was my temperament. I wanted to be a writer. I started smoking PCP. I used to rob stores. If you're walking around with a gold chain and I liked it, I would walk up to you and snatch it off your neck and until you want it back, you, you can take it back from me the way I took it from you. Natividad's crimes ranged from burglary to car theft and drug dealing. By the time he became an adult, he was making regular trips to prison. Next 18 years, I was in and out. They're doing life on the installment plan. Went to 11 prisons. One thing was sure. Natividad was a bulldog inside prison and on the streets. Ever since I could remember, I wanted to be a bulldog. Big Dog asked to have his identity concealed. This 22-year-old was raised in a house full of bulldogs. About nine, 10 years old, I tried to start doing little crimes and to make myself up there to be a little respected boy. Big Dog began putting in work as a bulldog. I would go up to you with a pistol, put it to your head, you're gonna freeze up. The moment you freeze up, I'll just pistol with you with it, lay you down. Take everything you got. You ain't got nobody, you a little square bear. Big Dog learned that there's no such thing as mercy for the enemy. But I'm gonna shut your whole down, you're gonna be boarded up. If you make it, you're gonna get up out of the spot. As far as running up on, maybe if your mom or sister and, and them inside the house, so well, them too. This lack of remorse is worn as a badge of honor by gang members. The Bulldogs ruled the city through sheer viciousness. Anybody who wanted, we gonna f with you. Everybody kill us. You be careful, man. Everyone's a target. From rival gangs, civilians, and even Fresno PD. From 2001 to 2006, the city saw a rise in violent crimes by the Bulldogs. Several of those were attacks against Fresno police officers. I myself have been assaulted several times. I've been shot at twice by the Bulldogs uh, myself. I have had a significant number of threats. I've had things posted on YouTube and other sites making threats against me. The police know that on the streets of Fresno, anything can happen. A blue uniform used to get respect, but the Bulldogs changed that. They wouldn't hesitate to bark. They wouldn't hesitate to flash gang signs at a uniformed officer. They wouldn't hesitate to yell obscenities or be challenging towards an officer. There was no hesitation at all. They knew our job was to take them to jail, or try to, and their job was to try to get away as long as we didn't disrespect each other, and now there are no rules when it comes to the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs feel they're being unjustly targeted. Why are they just focused on us particularly? They have no other ambition about any other gang out here besides Bulldogs. I don't know what they want, but, but they ain't gonna get it. Standing down is not something the Bulldogs do, and they aren't willing to change, not even for law enforcement. You know, they're not doing nothing out here for us. They don't give a f so long we care about them. Yes, we're targeting them. We're not making any bones about it, but we're not gonna rest until we do our job. July 31st, 2006, 8.30 p.m. 
Police officer Brian Nieto and his partner were riding along a residential area in Fresno on their motorcycles. They are assigned to conduct traffic operations at night. As the officers were riding southbound on Festa Street, Nieto noticed a car whose driver wasn't wearing a seatbelt. The vehicle committed a couple of uh, minor vehicle infractions, and they decided to initiate a traffic stop to enforce those infractions and further investigate the suspiciousness of the vehicle. But the driver didn't stop. He floored it. Nieto turned on his lights and sirens, starting a high-speed pursuit. He sped ahead of his partner to try to apprehend the suspect. Officer Nieto is a very experienced motorcycle rider. Then the driver slammed on his brakes. Nieto almost plowed into the back of the car. That caused Officer Nieto to end up almost parallel to the driver's side of the car. Before Nieto could park his bike, the driver rolled down the window and started shooting. Several shots were fired from inside the vehicle, ultimately striking Officer Nieto and his motorcycle. Officer Nieto was struck three times. His partner immediately rushed to his aid. Officer Nieto went down, and his partner pulls his bike up, bails off his bike, literally stands over Nieto to cover him, and engages the suspect vehicle with gunfire. The driver wasn't hit and sped away. Officer Nieto was taken to the hospital in critical condition and immediately rushed into surgery. His gunshot wounds had done some serious internal damage. They were administering last rites. Fresno, nicknamed the Raisin City. It's the farming capital of California. But the streets of this city are owned by a pack of wild dogs. The Bulldogs are the largest gang Fresno. Mandatory, no questions asked. That goes without being said. The Bulldogs have gained power through their cutthroat image. If I had a gun, I would shoot him. If I had a knife, I would stab him. If I had my fist, I'm gonna beat him. I mean, that's the way it was. Well, if you see any enemies, we'll smash on them. You know, we'll fight them, stab them, shoot them, drive them out of our neighborhoods. That hair trigger reaction is a product of their origins. Nineteen eighty four, San Quentin State Prison. This Bay Area institution is ruled by prison gangs, most divided along racial lines. There ain't nothing, there ain't nothing pretty in the joint, man. I've heard of some foul stuff going on, some foul stuff, and they're fighting with each other in there. Many Hispanic inmates claimed the Nuestra Familia. The gang had nearly 100 trained soldiers who were eager to battle rivals like the Mexican Mafia and the Aryan Brotherhood. The NF is very structured. The NF is a prison gang. That's where its roots are. It's been around since the 60s, and, you know, um, they were formed in opposition of the Mexican Mafia, or the LIME. The most hardcore part of the Nuestra Familia Army was called F-14. The F stood for Fresno, where the inmates hailed from, while the 14 stood for the 14th letter of the alphabet, N. At the time, the great majority of the Hispanic gang members of Fresno referred to themselves as F-14. There's a lot of taxing that goes on, uh, taxing of narcotic sales, prostitution, and in some cases, just taxing of businesses for protection. The crew collected taxes for the NF, but wanted more. The Fresno inmates were itching for their independence. Nino Loco Mendoza was doing time in the late 80s. Fresno said, we don't want to be a part of that anymore. No we're done, you know? They didn't want to be a part of the Nueva structure that the NF developed. To F-14, following someone else's rules was not an option. We don't have no shark collars. 
Nobody's here telling us what to do. It was all based on free will, like you get to do what you want. Lil Cisco has been a banging bulldog since he was 14. He learned during his first trip to the joint at the age of 18 that following someone else's rules was not what he wanted. Prison, they gotta follow the orders, they gotta pay with it a, a third of, of your canteen for a kitty box. How am I gonna listen to another man in prison telling me to clean my m***ing cell? The Fresno inmates were restless, but they couldn't just walk away from the Westra Familia. The only way out was through a bloody war. The battle started during the mid-80s. Nuestra Familia, they said, well, if you're not with us, you're against us. They came after us. The F-14ers were vicious, and stories of how the split occurred have become legend amongst the gang. We were always outnumbered two to one or three to one, no doubt. We were so no numbered and we're still putting it down. That's nothing. To us, it's like one on one. Anybody who want it, we give it to them, you know? You want to be our enemies. You going to be our enemies, we give a about you anyways. By 1986, F-14 had established itself in prison and took their fight to the streets of Fresno. But they decided they needed to break even further from NF. They adopted a new name, stealing it from the mascot of Fresno State University, the Bulldogs. When I got out of the joint, I started hearing some people barking, <laughs> wearing red, acting like bulldogs. There was little sex grabbing onto it. I was originally F-14, and I heard guys coming in, why there were uh, bulldogs, and I was like, what the hell is a bulldog? I never heard of it. I was still locked up. The bulldogs hit the streets with a chip on their shoulder. They went after anyone not representing bulldog pride. I see a dude, then you're like, I'm gonna go over there and stab him. I'm gonna try to kill him. The Bulldogs formed a stronghold on the city's east side. They began clearing the neighborhood of all other gangs. The gang was still largely unknown to the Fresno PD, but that changed with a vicious murder that put the Bulldogs on the map for good. July 31st, 1991, Fresno. Dorothy Medina and Arlene Sanchez were partying with some Bulldog members at a trailer park. The girls were drunk, and the gang members took advantage. They brutally raped Medina with Sanchez as a witness. The 18-year-olds decided not to report it, but later that night, Medina changed her mind. She came to the conclusion that she was going to go to the police about her being raped by uh, these other Bulldog gang members. A bulldog named Johnny Avila, who was at the party, learned that Medina and Sanchez were going to report the crime. Johnny Avila took it upon himself to uh, force these girls in a car with another gang member by the name of Jeffrey Spradlin and drove them out of the city limits. They proceeded to execute one of the victims by shooting her in the head. The other female victim attempted to run away into a great vineyard, which time she was chased down and then shot execution style. Spradlin shot both victims, but he was acting on the orders by Johnny Avila. The victim, Dorothy Medina, was found right about here. She was found uh, mid-afternoon by uh, farm laborers. After homicide detectives had canvassed the scene, the second victim was subsequently found in the second row of Great Vineyards right about there. The investigation quickly led to Johnny Avila and Jeffrey Spradlin. They perceived that they were going to snitch and they were going to ruin what drug connections or narcotics trade they had going on at that time. And plus, they had a, a cache of weapons at this trailer where the rape had occurred. Trying to make an example of the gangsters, 
Spradlin was convicted of rape and two counts of first-degree murder. And Avila of two counts of first-degree murder. Johnny Avila's on death row and Jeffrey Spradlin serving life without parole in the California prison system. The brutality of the murders put the Bulldogs on the Fresno PD radar. It made them start targeting anybody that was a part of, um, of this new Bulldog gang thing that was starting to hit the street. <laughs> that gave the Fresno Bulldogs its first real bad reputation. They called that the Bulldog slaying. The city of Fresno recognized we do have a problem with Bulldogs. They're not going away, and they're committing these types of crimes. The Bulldogs were now major players in the eyes of police. The gang spread, infecting neighborhood after neighborhood in Fresno. Just walking up to somebody, putting the knife to the neck, you know what I mean, and putting the gun to the dump. It's a rush, man. There's nothing like it. The Bulldogs thrived by rejecting the structure of rival gangs and prowling the streets in wild packs. Nobody's here telling us what to do. We wanted to be by ourselves. You know what I mean? The gang's lack of hierarchy has made it very difficult to take them down. There are no shot callers, per se, like you would see in some of the other more organized gangs. We have to take these individuals off at the street level, day in and day out, arrest them, re-arrest them, send them to prison. Their disorganization is actually their worst part of them, because you can't cut off the head somewhere and, and get rid of this gang, so you have to go at it piecemeal. But this didn't stop some individuals from trying to take control. In 1993, a bulldog named Armando Mousy Morales was incarcerated at the Fresno County Detention Facility. He started trying to push a structured Bulldog Nation concept. Morales tried to organize the Bulldogs, called it the Bulldog Nation, and tried to set up a rank structure very similar to the Nuestra Familia. The idea never took hold, and Mousy was pushed aside. The Bulldogs were simply too wild. The majority of them disagreed with that type of organization. They didn't want it, and they still don't want it. And those attempts have come and gone. That's what Bulldogs always will be about. It's about choosing to do what you want. By 2000, Bulldog crews had marked their territory and were prepared to defend it by any means necessary. Anybody moving into my spot, I'm going to stop every problem that's going to be in the future because I'll make it happen on site right there and there. The gang began to deal crack cocaine and heroin while continuing to commit armed robberies, doing anything that meant quick money. We'll go for a walk, come back with like three, four hundred bucks in less than five, ten minutes. A lot of people got robbed. They'll even rob their own dope connections within the dope world to gain money, control, and narcotics. The Bulldogs had caused enough hell in the city, and the Fresno PD was taking aim at the entire gang. There was a Bulldog gang member who shot at Officer Brian Nieto. But I think that was the one that broke the camel's back. Fresno, California, the all-American city. But this scenic area of California is plagued with thousands of gang members who aren't afraid to show their teeth. I wear the Bulldogs, I mean, with pride, you know what I mean? You know, with honor, you know? And I don't like to be dishonored in any way. Like my brother says, you know what I mean? Anybody could pull the trigger, really, it's just nothing. It's really nothing. In a city of nearly half a million, the Bulldogs have a presence in many of the neighborhoods. Currently, we know of six major sets uh, that the Bulldogs fall under. East Side, North Side, Park Side, Calva, uh, West Side or Sunset, and then all the county dogs. The Bulldogs of Fresno represent violence in every way. The gang uses a street language to communicate covertly. While I'm in the streets, I'm out there head hunting. I'm ready for somebody to look at me wrong, so I just take it off. Whenever I see 
I'm gonna ride on you. If I got a gun on me, I'm gonna wet your ass up. I found him scrap. The gang's messages become even more coded when they talk about their enemies. If I happen to see somebody moving in or I see a new face on the block, I'm jamming them up. What's up, dog? Where you from, you know? Every rival has a derogatory name in the Bulldog Dictionary. A buster is a Nathaniel. A scrap from the south side. Bulldogs call Crips Crabs. Their derogatory nicknames go both ways. Rivals of the Bulldogs will often refer to them as bullfrogs or mutts. And that's generally accepted as a derogatory term by their rivals. Greetings between Bulldogs are simple and direct. They just call them dog. That's the way they communicate. Hey, dog, what's going on? They'll bark at each other. They'll, they'll bark during an assault. And that just tells anybody it's being done by Bulldogs. They were barking at officers as they came into the neighborhood. Barking is very significant for Bulldogs because it lets them know we're here. We're patrolling what we call Butler and Hazelwood area. It's an area known for the Fifth Street Bulldogs. We've had murders here, drive-by shootings, even shootings between Bulldogs here. On Fresno's southeast side is a street called Kings Canyon. For years, this strip has been the place where car lovers come to show off their rides. We do allow cruising within our community one night of the week, Sunday evening, only on Kings Canyon, and it has a curfew of 10 o'clock p.m. Unfortunately, some people take advantage of that and try to go out onto other streets. That's when we just start writing tickets and towing cars, but they still come. You know, they still drive up there and make the illegal turns, and if their music's loud, there are so many cops up there that, you know, you do anything wrong, they're gonna get you. What usually starts off as a peaceful event can sometimes become deadly by sundown. The Bulldogs have been known to use cruising at night to their advantage. Uh, some, some of these guys out here are, are just cruising, looking for girls, and some guys out here are really out here trying to gangbang. And um, they're, they're mad dogging, and they're representing their set, and because this is such a diverse group, you know, I mean, they can get pretty nasty. Unfortunately, um, a lot of times when you get the gangs, the gang element is there and uh, it, it has uh, turned deadly in the past uh, involving bulldogs. And we know that when you have those types of things, cruising late at night, early morning hours, that allows for an environment where problems are gonna start. So we, we try to control cruising in Fresno without eliminating cruising. Fresno PD is constantly on these streets, trying to keep the bulldogs under control. Anything on your back? A lot of stuff? Oh, or? So we're at Fresno right there. Fresno? You got a dog on the ankle. Lift up your neck. Two dog paws on his uh, right forehead. And they want everybody to know that I belong to this game. Brown pride in the back, just saying I'm proud to be a Mexican. Little bulldog. I got Fresno on the back of my head, we can't see nothing I hear. The gang takes extreme pride in showing its allegiance. They are so blatant about putting a large bulldog on their face or something related to the bulldogs on their face or neck. Most of the images used by the gang have been lifted from Fresno State University Bulldogs. They adopted everything bulldog, the word, the picture, dog paws, the uh, acronym BDS, which stands for Bulldogs. We've been red, you know. R&D, respect these dogs. Fresno State Bulldogs, the big red wave. A lot of people will look at us and think we're Norteños because we're wearing red or they think we're bloods. It just fit, you know, and, and, and I feel bad for those college students. <laughs> these Bulldog images aren't just about football anymore. They now delineate territory in the Fresno gang wars. This is definitely a bulldog neighborhood, bulldog home. This is what they claim is their territory. The head, the emblem that they're taking from Fresno State is their own for bulldogs. And looks like Fresno on the bottom. They'll tag Eastside Fresno, ESF, but they'll cross out the S 
because their rival gang is Sudeños, and they don't, even with their own tag, they don't want to give respect to the S. Some Bulldog sets represent with gang signs. The most recognizable and commonly used one is BDS. The East Side members have another way of representing. The Bulldogs are generational, and some believe it's never too early to start banging. The youngest validator that I've run into is nine years old. And we sometimes, uh, we're doing probation, parole compliances, or we serve a search warrant. You'll see their parents are involved, their bulldogs. I've seen grandparents. There is no formal gang initiation, though some crews require a jump in. The video shown here was confiscated by Fresno PD in 2007. It shows bulldogs from the east side jumping in a new member. Is that 40 and 33? It's a beating with a time limit. Keep on going. Depending on who's overseeing the jump in, the timing and number of people involved can vary. This was part of Lil Cisco's initiation. Five, six people did it. They took a number to me too. Numerous hits to the head. It's pretty violent, really. Some sets don't believe in this practice. Big Dog was never jumped in. I'm supposed to ride for you and die for you. What the f I'm gonna beat your ass for a minute and a half and damn near kill you myself for it. Big Dog takes far more pleasure going after rivals and selling drugs. I'm rebellious. It's not that I can't be trusted. I thrive off negativity. Anything negative, I'm for it. My heart don't beat. My palms don't get sweaty. I don't get scared. I'll smile and say, let's go. The Bulldogs' reputation of warring with enemies now included law enforcement. The gang has been at odds with the Fresno PD since 2006, after some horrific crimes hit the city. They're not wanted in our community because of the turmoil which they create, which is the very reason why we've set the goal of eliminating the Bulldog Gang from Fresno. Fresno, 2006. The Bulldogs, a vicious street gang, was barking threats at their enemies. I busted their bubble while teeth fall out of his mouth, watch his nose leak, watch his eyes roll up. Bulldogs, we're bulls, we're dogs, you know? Eventually, the gang turned their attention to the Fresno PD. It was an act of war. Bulldog gang members, they're the biggest problem we have here. And they will do whatever it takes to get either get away from us or assault one of us, kill one of us to get a reputation that they can take the police on. July 31st, 2006, 8.30 p.m. Motorcycle cop Brian Nieto and his partner Jim Young gave chase to a car whose driver refused to stop. The suspect vehicle took off, and Officer Nieto, with his skill level on the bike, he was able to easily stay with it, whereas Officer Young was trying to catch up. The driver, 25-year-old Bulldog Joaquin Figueroa, was not going to submit to anyone, much less the cops. Figueroa pulled out a gun and fired multiple rounds from his vehicle. Officer Nieto was hit three times. His gunshot wounds had done some serious internal damage. He was not expected to survive. Joaquin Maltos Figueroa was a hardened criminal with a lengthy rap sheet. His association was with the Lewis Street set of the Bulldog Criminal Street Gang. Figueroa was already wanted for questioning in a double murder case, as well as numerous carjackings and robberies. 
police quickly found the car Figueroa was driving. Inside were gloves, a scanner, and a magazine of bullets. All of these items concern me because really what they told me was this is a much more sophisticated guy than the guy that takes a car and goes out for a joyride. Figueroa also left a cell phone with his home number in it. They went literally from house to house, place to place, narrowly avoiding capture. At one point, there were over 200 officers involved in the search for Joaquin Figueroa. August 3rd, Fresno PD finally found the fugitive. At that time, Joaquin Figueroa came out of the house and started to leave. That's when our officers came in. When our officers confronted him, he tried to flee. Police believed he was armed and opened fire. And our officer fired and was forced to shoot and kill him. Figueroa went down and was pronounced dead at the scene. Brian Nieto, the police officer who Figueroa had shot three times, barely survived. After nearly three months in the hospital, he made a miraculous recovery. Initially, the family was told that I wouldn't make it. Uh, they gave me 12 hours to live. They had to learn to walk again, and because I was being fed through a tube, I had to learn to swallow again. To this day, I still have nerve damage in my left leg. It's like starting all over again. Nieto hopes to one day return to the job. I'm officially retired. Uh, I'm not a police officer anymore. I'm not sure if I'll be able to go back to full duty. I'll be with my leg. It may take several years to heal, but uh, I'm sure I'll have something to do with law enforcement. All right, brother. Take care. The Fresno PD knew Nieto's attempted murder and Figueroa's death wouldn't stop the Bulldogs. The summer had been filled with armed robberies, gang shootings, and a horrific rape and murder of a 16-year-old girl. We had an incident with a young girl, Courtney Rice, um, where she was raped and um, she was placed um, in the back of a vehicle and taken out into the country. Her body was found in the back of a pickup truck a few days later. The city decided it needed to rid itself of the gang. They will get the message that we're no longer going to tolerate the Bulldog Gang in Fresno. Fresno decided to reach out to the gang by forming the Mayor's Gang Prevention Initiative, or MGPI. It offered educational services, job placement, and immediate assistance to gang members looking for an alternative to gang life. We knew that a lot of gang members are out there um, have a desire to drop out of a gang, but they don't know where to drop out to. The city also knew not all of the gangsters would accept this hand up, so they started Operation Bulldog. And we needed to launch Operation Bulldog for the purpose of eliminating that gang in our community because they had become a menace. Chief created a tactical team that sole purpose and sole mission was to, on a nightly basis, go out and contact these Bulldog gang members. Any Bulldog gang member seen on the street was immediately stopped, questioned, and frisked. Bulldog, so many of them got locked up already. It's ridiculous, dude. You can't even wear a Fresno State jersey no more and they think you're a Bulldog. Bulldogs now have a bad stigma here in the city of Fresno. They've been trying to rid the, the city of the Bulldogs. They got all these different law enforcement things that have teamed up together. But for every gang member arrested, there are five more like Big Dog who refuse to be told what to do. A lot of us don't want change because we see no future in it. We want to change for it. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm begging. I know about you guys. I know about us. For 20 years, the Bulldogs have roamed the streets of Fresno, California, leaving bodies in their wake. A lot of people don't realize, but you can get shot for anything. You can get stabbed for anything. 
Police say they're now beginning to tame them. They're no longer barking at citizens like they used to, or police officers when we drove by, and we're displacing them. They're leaving Fresno. Some are even changing their look. These individuals are uh, changing their attire. Uh, individuals are growing out their hair because they had bulldog tattoos on their heads that were clearly visible. Since Operation Bulldog began, there has been nearly 11,000 felony arrests and 2,200 convictions of gang members. Hey, hey, hey. But the city is in free of all the dogs. Police tactical units regularly run a sweep of Fresno's neighborhoods. They arrest an average of 50 gang members every week who are charged with various crimes. This Fresno PD Bulldog tactical team is searching the southeast part of the city. They never know what they'll run across during these sweeps. My Bulldog tag officers were in the area 10th and Mono here and recognized the individual as a Eastside Fresno Bulldog gang member on parole. They uh, went to go talk to him. Uh, he ran inside the residence. As they asked him to come out, he refused to come out, so then they surrounded the location. We're going to do everything in our power to disrupt their lifestyle, to displace them, and to dismantle that gang. If you're a Bulldog gang member and you choose to openly flaunt that, you will be contacted on the street. If you commit a crime and you're a Bulldog gang member, you're going to be arrested for it, you're going to be prosecuted for it. The Bulldog's frustration towards the Fresno PD is showing. They got a lot of malicious intent. They got hatred for it. For whatever reason that they do, it's there, it's obvious. You should pay attention to TV, pay attention to every time you see a cop pulling somebody over, who is it? Bulldogs. The Mayor's Gang Prevention Initiative has put some members on the road to a life free from the gang. Others have found their way out of gang life on their own. Natividad Mendoza is 38 years old. He left the gang six years ago when a judge gave him a break. The day before trial is when the public defender says, you know, you know, the judge doesn't want to send you back to prison. I was supposed to go back to prison until 2014. I ain't supposed to be here now. True to the gang's independent spirit, Natividad says the Bulldogs let him walk away. I told the homies, I proclaimed my faith and said, this is who I am now and the homies accepted it, and I moved forward from there. Time and time again, I would always end up back in prison. And I don't know how you guys Today, Natividad is executive director of From Gangs to Jobs, located in Phoenix, Arizona. He helps troubled kids find an alternative to the gang life. My hope is to reach as many people as we can in this organization and to build leaders from here. Lil Cisco also walked away from life as a bulldog. He made his decision in 2005 while in the Fresno County Jail. Every time I went to the hole, my name was shouted out. People stopped barking, oh, rah, 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 Cisco, what's up, dog? I decided to change my life. So homies were like, you know what, respect you as a bull and I respect you as a man, dog. Do what you gotta do. Go out and live your life, don't come back. He continues to look over his shoulder but says he can rest a little easier. I don't worry about the cost no more, you know what I mean? Like, that was my main priority before. Now it's just more peaceful, a whole lot more peaceful. Law enforcement has quieted the Bulldog's bark, but it's unlikely to silence it. Not with Bulldogs like Big Dogs still on the streets. I'm a gangbang and there's nothing you can tell me about it. This is what I do. I've been doing this every day of my life. Big Dog says he will never give up on the Bulldogs for committing crimes, what he calls doing the dirt. If I'm capable of walking and using both of my hands, I'm going to do dirt until I become crippled. I don't care how old I am. I'm a Bulldog. I'm going to die for this. 